Well, welcome to Tweet for Media. I'm your host, Kamal Haynes, and today we have another special featured interview in store for you. Today we will be speaking about pilots and the airline industry, and who better to speak to than Mr. Cameron Withrow of Cape Air. Cape Air has been down in the Caribbean for more than 20 years at this point. Cape Air started in 1989 with a single pilot and a single aircraft flying Boston, Massachusetts to Provincetown, Massachusetts, connecting a very, Provincetown's a very small rural community uh, that it's a couple of hours to drive to Boston, uh, to the large city, but uh, by flight in a Cessna 402, it's a 15 minute flight to connect to that community. So that's how Cape Air started more than 30 years ago. And today we uh, have an employee group of more than 800 pe people. And we span across all over the New England area in the United States to the Midwest, around St. Louis, Chicago, and Nashville, out to Billings, Montana, and down to the Caribbean, uh, the Caribbean islands. As it relates to, um, you know, you were, you were spoken on the expansion through the United States of America. When did you first come to the UBI? Um, or what is the current staff complements as it relates to Bolivia? Yeah, you know, I wasn't around Cape Air when we started in the in the Caribbean islands, but I know we've been down here for more than 20 years at this point, and it's always been a really resilient and a really strong operation for us. We've got a very senior employee group. Here we are in Tortola, and uh, we've had there's about three captains here that have been with us for nearly 20 years each. Um, and the same thing out in San Juan, a lot of the employees there have been with us since we started down in the Caribbean. From the airport service crew, the customer service agents, to the pilots and mechanics, uh, the, the employee group have, has uh, been around Cape Air for, for a long time. And there's a lot of opportunities for us to continue and expand uh, in the current markets to meet the demand that we're in um, uh, and to expand into new markets if we're able to recruit uh, additional pilots uh, to help us support that growth. What is the current staff size here in on Tortola as a minister keep here, the current staff size? Yeah, in Tortola, I think we currently have three captains and uh, we are exploring the opportunity to hire a couple of first officers that would fly a second in command and build their hours to become a captain. So that's a, a really great opportunity for young and aspiring pilots who have just started their careers um, to, to now have the opportunity to start with the experience they have as at Cape Air as a first officer. Uh, to continue getting that experience. So uh, we have several airport service employees. We usually keep a couple of airplanes out here as well. And as it relates to uh, the current destinations that you guys touch from the BVI, can you speak to that as well? Yeah, so from uh, the BVIs, we fly in Virgin Gorda, Tortola. We go out to the U.S. Virgin Islands in uh, St. Thomas and St. Croix. And uh, additionally, from San Juan, we serve uh, the west end of the island to Mayaguez, and uh, from San Juan also Culebra and, uh, and, and those islands. The initiative you guys would have had today, um, where we would have seen the initiative uh, being posted and advertised on Facebook, mm -hmm. would have transferred to actual uh, persons coming into this. Speak about that. Yeah, I, the, 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 there was a lot of excitement on social media. I would say today was productive. We met with, in total, about eight individuals uh, from individuals that are zero flight experience, but they're young and they're aspiring aviators, uh, just looking for some guidance in the industry and you know some direction on where to go to get their certificates. So I was able to introduce those individuals to a unique program where Cape Air uh, provides the opportunity for employees to, um, after they've gotten their first couple of certificates, Cape Air will invest in them further uh, they have the opportunity to receive that funding to get their certificates. So it was exciting to share that opportunity with them. And for the other individuals, uh, they were would be candidates that were, would be considered first officers. Uh, what we're here today to really recruit are captains, someone who wants to live and stay in the BVIs and serve their community uh, and to be a Cape Bear captain for a long time. Uh, so I'm happy to say we met with uh, two candidates that sort of fit that criteria. Uh, and next week we will meet with them further with our hiring committee to complete an interview and uh, to talk about next steps from there. 
And in terms of uh, what are you looking for specifically? I know you're looking for captains, you're looking mm -hmm. for someone to live here, whatever. But what are the qualities and skills that you're really looking for that would bring that particular individual to the top of the list? Yeah. So obviously meeting the basic flight requirements for the FAA ATP airline transport certificate. Uh, so having 1500 hours at a minimum um, is, is the flight requirement to have that certificate. Uh, Cape Air, um, but when we're looking for candidates, it's more than that. You know, we look at their training history and their performance to make sure they have a great safety reputation. Um, but Cape Air is very different from uh, many of the other larger airlines that fly large jets. There's no cockpit door that separates our passengers from our pilots. Um, so they're, they're our passengers, our pilots are engaging with the customers. There's a, a level of customer service that they have to offer. Um, you know, they're not just flying the plane, they're, they're being there and engaging with the passengers. So that's what we look for in candidates. So having experience in customer service roles is very attractive. And I know you spoke about uh, the initiative of uh, training some of these persons that are not yet to captain um, level and as well as getting them on board to, to somewhat sit in and build their, their uh, flying hours to get to that level. But also can that particular program come on where you can see locals benefit from such? Yeah, so I would encourage individuals who have started their flight training and have earned, say, their private and their instrument and their commercial certificates, uh, but there's still a gap that needs to be filled. Usually our hiring criteria for first officers requires 500 hours. So it's always a challenge. You know, once you finish the training, you have about 200 to 300 hours. It can be a challenge to get over that hurdle to get another couple hundred hours. So what I would encourage those people to do is to look, uh, become a certified flight instructor. That's going to really give you uh, structured experience and prepare you to be a first officer at Cape Air. Uh, there are opportunities down here as well to do aerial survey, to fly skydivers, um, and, and things like that. So find some structured experience um, uh, to continue building those hours or learn more about the internal gateway program where uh, after you've made a commitment, into Cape Air, uh, there's an opportunity for the company to invest further in you. So which means some of the candidates they could potentially yes. be future Cape Air um, first officer yes. pilots. Yeah, one of the candidates we met with today, pending uh, him submitting an application uh, later this week, we will follow up with an interview next week as well, and he could possibly join us in, uh, in March. I mean, as it relates to uh, the career of pilots uh, in the territory, you don't really hear much information about that. How could you, uh, what sort of encouraging words can you lend to the public to get more people that are interested in becoming a pilot um, that particular information that would get them over that hurdle of potentially, you know, rather going to school for it, reading a little bit more about it, but yeah. get them over that hurdle to further pursue the prospect of becoming a pilot? Yeah, I would say first, uh, go out to your local airport. Pilots love, uh, pilots have so many different stories. They follow, there's so many different pathways you can follow um, and they love sharing, you know, how they achieve their dreams. So go out to the local airport, talk to pilots, hear their story, and then also research companies like Cape Air. And uh, we have, part of my job is to manage pathway programs and create these opportunities to help people become, give them a, a clear track um, to put them uh, on a clear track to become an airline captain. So reach out, even if you don't have the qualifications, reach out to my team uh, and you know, uh, let us have a conversation with you. So many airlines, uh, you, know, you can also sort of think of it as, you know, think of your long-term goal. You know, do you wanna become a captain at a large jet operator and research that company and see if they have programs that uh, have uh, suggestions for aspiring pilots. And finally, anything you would like to leave for the audience, uh, potential uh, customers, potential employees, any final words you'd like to leave for them? That's a good question. I would say thank you for welcoming me down to the Caribbean islands. It's my first time to the BVIs and everyone has been incredibly welcoming. Uh, and uh, it, it's been great to talk to local pilots and hear their stories and to share my experience and the experience of other pilots um, uh, and hopefully uh, see some of them join us someday and uh, become a captain for us in the Caribbean. Okay, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.